Hello, this is Nikki in Niagara coming to you from Niagara Falls, Canada. And it is that time of month again. The time when all the color tubists gather around the monitor and watch the finished pages. Videos. <laughs> I was going to call them movies <laughs> and watch the videos. I have so much fun at this time of the year. I watch all my people I subscribe to, then I go into the search and I, and I search for completed pages that month and I'll always find some new people that I'm not subscribed to and or old people that I'm just not subscribed to because they don't usually do coloring. But they do do finished pages, so I'll always find some new ones then. So it's very busy YouTube watching time for me. So I'm going to show you my finished pages. This is not all of them, believe me. I kind of feel like I didn't color as much as usual, but I have a huge stack of books here, so maybe I did. We'll see. So this is the uh, large book that I am currently working on, or working in every month, because at some point I would like to finish this. And so the pages that I did this month, and I try to do two a month. I know it'll take me forever to finish it, but slow and steady wins the race. So I did this one. This is all done in a uh, glitter gel pen, and um, it's called the Blue Dart Frog, so I decided to uh, go with that color, the blue. Most of mine are not realistic colors. Um, these can be done in an alcohol marker, because all you have on the back is the name of the animal and some, you know, information about it. So if you're not bothered about that, you can use alcohol markers. But I decided that this was going to be a book that I did in, in uh, gel pens. Because I don't use them for a whole bunch of things. This way they get used for sure. And I did this one, which is a Japanese Harlequin Rabbit. I love this blue. Took almost my whole pen to do that. But I love it. I love that blue. So, oh, and the background on this one, I am pretty sure that's pan pastel. No, it's not pan pastel. It's a stick of pastel that I rubbed on. And on the other one, I didn't do the background. So, there's that. Then... The next one was a Jade Summer book, and I did a few in here. Did this one, and I just absolutely love this light pink as a neutral color. Seems to fit in no matter where you use it. This is one I did, I did before, but I used that light pink as a neutral color. Have I done it anywhere else in here? Yeah, the very first one I did it too. I must be just drawn to it. So I'm going to have to try and use that color but not use red and orange because those seem to be going into it. So yeah, I like this one. It's my favorite in this book. The other one didn't turn out so well. Yeah, I don't know. Those colors are just ugly. <laughs> I've heard people say you can throw down any colors into a Mandela and it's going to look good, but in my opinion, here is the one that breaks your rule, because this is ugly. I think it's this green that does it. But, you know, when I look in the camera to see how you're seeing it, it doesn't look as bad. Maybe I need to, like, look at it from across the room to like it. And you will also notice that in every book, that I show you. There is um, buffer paper in it and I, when I get to it I will show you why I now leave a piece of paper in every single one of my <laughs> books. 
Okay, the next I try to do, I try to do one every month in this too because it's, it, they're very time consuming and I think most of the Creative Haven color by number ones are. And the thing is that I just really don't like what I did. It's too messy. I just wasn't in the mood when I started and then I got in the mood and then I kind of just didn't like it because it's kind of scribbly and stuff. You know, I have a line on my viewer for my camcorder and I don't know how to get rid of it but it really bothers me. <laughs> yeah, so it is what it is. There's my paper. Now this was fun. This is a new book that I got this month and I did I did a, um, a um, I did a video for this already that it's already up. You can take a look at it. It's a new book that the publisher sent me and um, I started right at the very beginning and it is Pixels and it are, they are really intricate pictures. They're really nice. Um, didn't do my best coloring on here and you have to use um, fine liners because the squares are quite tiny but they're visible to the eye. I wear glasses and with my glasses I can certainly see the squares and everything but to work in it I have to also use a magnifying glass but as I've said before, I do all my fine work with a magnifying glass, so it doesn't bother me. So I did that one, and I also did this one, which has a story to tell because it almost didn't get finished. So I had done this and a part of the black outline in here and so she was outlined and well I think if I as I've said before I fell asleep and when I woke usually there's scribble marks here and there and I can usually cover them up to a certain degree that I'm happy but this was messed it looked like some kid had come into my room and scribbled all over my page and then left but there was this line going down here in black that went right into here and something was drawn in squares. I tell you, I was drawn squares in my sleep because that's what was there, right where I knew her pink and gray ballerina dress was going to go. The other thing is, is that her arm looked like that. I don't know if you can see it. And I thought, I thought I'd colored half her arm. I wasn't too concerned about that because I went, well, one armed ballerina, equal opportunity, no problem there. But I looked at the uh, cover, thank goodness it's the cover picture, because I looked at the cover and I noticed that I hadn't, that her arm went this way. So there was only one square in there that would join this part to the arm over here that I colored in black. So I just wasn't going to finish it because of all the, all the um, craziness going on there. But then I thought, you know, just finish it, whatever. It's just, you know, you turn the page and you're just going to be coloring squares on a different page. So finish this one up. And I mean, there is that black in the in the middle there, but it doesn't. Sh it's not as bad as I thought it was. Also up here, you can tell that I just, you know, there was all sorts of scribbling under the black. So I just went to town while I was asleep. So here's my buffer paper that I keep in my books from now on. Not because of that. Then I did my two out of here every month because I just love working in this book and I couldn't go through the month without working in it. And these are the two I did. I have absolutely no idea 
who either of them are, but I'm pretty sure they're both villains and they were a ton of fun to color. The only problem is, and I've done this before, is I get carried away when I'm, do, when, when I'm doing the black and I colored all, all his eye in black. So there's supposed to be white in there. Thank goodness this time I didn't color in the teeth all black because I did that to Jafar in a different book and he looks like a demon is one of my one of my uh, comment commenters had noticed and I totally agreed with him. So there we go. Did those two. Then got me some more coloriage and working in the baby's circle book. And I like to do a two page spread in this one too. So I did the kitty, which I absolutely love. That turned out adorable. This one I really mucked up because I was trying to do, I was trying to do the lines, color in using the lines like the French do. If you're really into these books, you've probably watched a lot of French color tube. And um, I have, and I subscribe to quite a few French color tubers as well. Um, it helps that I can, that I can sort of, uh, understand French. Well, that's a whole different story, but I went this way and then I went this way and it just, it just screwed that all up. But, uh, at least you can tell who it is, right? Okay, then this has got to be one of my favorite books, but I am going to retire it for a little bit and I'm going to go work in one of the other Grayscale books by Jade Summer that I have just to see how much, if it's the Chibi Girls that I like so much or if it's the Grayscale. So I think I'll do the Kawaii one because they'd be kind of similar to this one. But let's get to what I did this time. I did the very first one, if we can turn it. Oh, this is covering it. There we go. This is the one I did. I used, um, used Copics for most of it. I used, um, I think Stetler fine liners for the, uh, for the butterflies and for their, um, antenna. And I used a metallic pen for the insides of her wings. And I used, uh, oh, glitter gel pens for her eyes. So this one here, every time I open up this book, I look at this one and I would go, ooh, that one looks too hard to do. Because there's so much detail in it. And this time I opened up the book and I went, gosh, I don't know if I'll ever do that one. And then I just said, it was like my insides just said to me, yes, you are. You're going to do it right now. So I did and it wasn't that hard. I did the whole background first before I did any features. I did the sky, I did the grass, I did the trees. And then I went in and filled in everything and it was really easy. And fun. So there's my water page. And my next one is from Nightfall. And I did this one. So this has a um, Posca for the background. Um, glitter gel for the stars and the little circles and then the rest of it is done in pencil but I'm oh these are from I'm pretty sure these are from my new ones yeah so these are from the Brookfooner or whatever they're called so yeah I'm gonna practice with putting the shadows in the hair Yeah, I like that one. Uh, 
Then my next is one out of my little Zen Coloriage Mystère. And I did this temple or pagoda or whatever it's called. And I love it. I just love the pictures in here. I like the one from before better for a temple. A close up of the temple there. This one's... My blues are probably not the greatest. That's why it has a little funny look to it. Okay, and then... I cannot keep myself away from this book. The Art of Mandela by... Jason Hamilton, and let's see if I can open this up. There we go. So, I did this one here, and I used um, just budget-friendly alcohol markers and um, big markers, and then I used liquid pearls to go all around this row and to go around the green circle in the middle. don't know if you can see that, but that was black with white dots on it. That's how the original one was. And so I decided to cover up the white dots by doing that. Then I did this one, which I really like. Um, I think the colors turned out nice. And this, I guess, is probably big markings or some other sorry, Big Intensity, they're called now, or some other alcohol markers, and then I used a metallic gold pen for the filigree in the middle there. And this one I really liked. Uh, it was surprising that these colors t went together like this, but I, I picked those colors, and that's how it turned out. It was pretty good. I like that one. And that's it. So I just did the three out of that one. Okay, so then I have to have my dose of patterns, and I'm still working my way through this magazine. This magazine sure was worth the money for me. It was $9.99 Canadian, and I am getting a lot of use out of it. So I did this one, and I tried to do a two-color one, and I think it worked pretty well. That's not exactly the most eye-catching of all, but I think it works with these patterns, with the things swirling back upon each other. So that's big markers. And so is this one, and this one I adore. But for some reason, it feels like this one should go this way. <laughs> Just because of this long thing here. But whichever way you look at it, yeah, so I really like that one. Is that all I did? Not all of it's enough. I usually do two in that as well. Okay, and then this is the book that I had uh, determined to finish this month. And I did indeed finish it. It's my fifth finished coloring book. And there is a flip through of the completed book on my channel already so I'm not going to I'm not going to show you any pages in here but I will show you the last two that were colored just just so if you haven't seen that it might give you might tell you whether you want to go watch it or not so there was that one and there was that one. Oh, one more and that one that's one of my favorites so I've ordered another one of these books by Lilt Kids to see if I like it because that was quite quite fun to work in. The only problem is is that I did have a lot more than I thought <laughs> to finish so I worked pretty hard on it this month and so since that book is finished I need a book for September to finish so this is the one that I've chosen. I think this one's been hanging around for quite too long so I have done a picture in it this month and that's this beaver page. Pretty sure that's the only one I did. Or did I do two? Oh, I did. No, I did that one a long time ago. 
Did I? Yeah, I did that one a long time ago. It doesn't have a date. So, yes, this is the one I did. And from this point on, none of them are done. Yeah, and there's quite a few. And these are pretty, these are pretty, um, well, not complicated, but detailed. So, they take more than a minute to do them. Okay, so I ventured into the world of Hannah Lynn this month. I have never colored a Hannah Lynn picture in my map. In my map. Oh my goodness. Sometimes the weirdest words come out of my mouth. So I have never done a Hannah Lynn in my entire life. And ever since I've had this magazine, I've been looking through it and every page was no, 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 no. And the problem with it is just all the, is the steampunk part of it, all the metal that's in there. I don't, um, I don't think I really would have found it so intimidating if it wasn't for all the metal. And I like steampunk, but I guess I'm just not crazy about coloring it. But once I got over that, I picked a picture and it was here and that is what I came up with so for the metal I just went in with metallic gold and silver because there was some stuff on her that obviously looked like it had to be iron and other stuff that looked like it was probably brass so that's why I chose the gold and the, and the silver and uh, I did the background and I did the girl without any of the stuff so I was left with all the steampunk stuff in it. It, it certainly made it easier that way. So that was my one and only Hannah Lynn book, uh, picture that I've done but I will definitely be coming back to this because I like it. And then we have the tri animal that I did. Is that the one? Yeah. So this, why do I think? No. This is the one I did, the poison dart frog. And I'm doing the vivid color schemes. This is a this is a color by number book, and I'm using the vivid palette so that they, they will turn out in sort of like pop colors. Now this page right here is just a freestyle page so that you can do your own messing around with it. Well, I'm not going to. So that means that I'm going to color this one with alcohol markers. So there's a few pages in here where you can do that. So this one is going to be next in here and it's going to be alcohol markers. I'm really looking forward to that. All right, guys. Why does every book I now have have a blotter page in it? because of this guy right here. So, this is the picture that I did. This is the picture that I did. And I did all this blue and this green without a blotter page. And when I looked on the other side, it was wrecked all down here. This was, this was completely blue and this was green. Or down here was green. So, this page turned out nice and I just continued to color it and didn't worry about the next page. But then I thought, you know, I'm either going to have to rip out the next page or I'm going to have to see if I can color over it and get it to work out. So, this is the page and you can't tell what I did. Fortunately, the blue covered the blue. Now, most of this ship here had been colored blue, but it's got dark reds and browns and greens over it, so it just, it just covered it all up. And in a few places, I had to use, I had to use a dark, darker color than they had said, or a different color than what they said dark so that it would cover up what was under there and uh, like here I used a dark dark brown for the 
for the sand, I guess it is. But um, whatever color you were supposed to use wasn't that dark. But I had dark green on here. I can vaguely see it under there. But um, I have to look. I don't think anybody can see it. So, if that ever happens to you, take the chance and see if you can work with it by changing up the colors or if you're lucky some of the places will get covered naturally because of color choice but uh, don't feel down and out right away that's my advice to you for today so if nothing else keep that to heart <laughs> the words and wisdom of Nikki <laughs> Wife's sister would tell you to run! <laughs> okay. Now, uh, Sun Life. Don't tell me I only did one in here. Okay, shoot. So, I've got that one. And I'm really enjoying putting in grays as my neutral colors. It's one of my new things. I have a newfound love for gray even put a gray in this. I like this one. It's pretty. And the next one. Why is that? I don't know why that's got some marks on it, like glitter or something. No idea where that came from. There's been no glitter in this book. Okay, so there we go. Um, I don't have a lot to go in here. I mean, there's, you know, there's a few. But if I put some time, if I kept this one out, worked in it more than just doing two, I could probably finish that too next month. Wouldn't that be great if I finished two books in a month? Okay, then this and this this worked for um color your hoard this month i did not work on any color alongs i don't know why it just there was i wrote down some there there were some that i were going to do but i guess none of them really gripped me and i just totally forgot that there were any and i didn't even work on my hoard on my hoard books. I was actually really busy getting them all, pu all put on my bookcase in a nice order that I like. So uh, that's my excuse and that's the one I'm sticking to. So this was Color My Hoard and I loved working in this. We did this one. I really want it. It's a fox, and I really, really, really didn't want to do it red or brown. Well, okay, I did do it brown, but you know, reddish brown. So I really didn't want it to be typical colors. So this is what I did. And the blue added in there is awesome. And then, okay, what's happening? Oh, you know what? I put liquid dots on this and it's not taking it kindly. Must have closed the page before they were dry. That's the problem with the liquid pearls is they take a long time to dry. So here's my owl. Uh, my owl. Here's my lion. You probably can't see the liquid pearls are here and here and here and here. I don't think I'm going to use them anymore because I can't be bothered to let stuff dry. I need to, if I'm using wet medium, I've got my heat tool right beside me and I've shh, and there, three seconds and it's dry. You can't use heat tools on stuff like liquid pearls. It just burns them. It doesn't make them poof up like they're supposed to. So I think I'm going to put my page there. So it doesn't get stuck to the black side again. Yeah, so I only did those two. I'm really pleased with like the colors that I used on those. Then I did another one in Travel Mosaic. 
I did. Then I do one or two. One or two. Yeah, two. So I did a painter. And this is really cool. If you look at what he's painting, it's a car going down an alley, like there's walls on other, either side of them, and the car going down, and then up on the horizon is the Eiffel Tower. So then we turn to the next page, and there's what he's drawing the picture of. There's the two walls, and then the Eiffel Tower in the background. I think that is so cute. I hope other people notice that too, because that was neat. So yeah, this is a pretty simple mosaic one to work in, and um, I've gotten the hang now. It took me a while to get the hang of what I was actually going to use, which of my, which of my uh, staples I was, staples, which of my markers I was going to use in here. And it looks like I've settled with a uh, Crayola Super Tips. If you can't find the right thing, try Crayola Super Tips. I used to not like them because they didn't have them when I was a kid. And that weird conical nib that's on them, I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to use it. I just like, I made a mess with it. But, uh, yeah, I eventually got the hang of it. And they are good. They are good markers, that's for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. And then one of my favorite things to color are mosaics. And this is a Dover Spark book by Jessica Mazurkiewicz. And I did the first page in here. And that is all. This was done with my Color Soft. So it's all done in pencil on my Color Soft. And these are single-sided too. Oh, I used a black sharpie to fill in, fill in the places right here because they were already black, I think. Yeah, and I just wanted it to be uniform. So there you go. Then another Dover Spark came up, and that's the mandalas, and I did. Oh, I started from the beginning in this one, too. August 11th, I did the uh, title page. And then I colored the, the little thing on the top here. This obviously was an alcohol markers, and it didn't matter. But this one was behind the title page, so I used water. Water-based markers for that, fine liners. And then I did this one. And, and that's it. <laughs> and then, I told you it was going to be long. Okay, so Color Me Calm by Angela Porter. And I did one of these. I think. Okay, no. I never do one mandala. I always do at least two. So I did this one. And that's pretty good. I usually don't do well with a dark color palette. But I think I succeeded there. See, then I go back to bright. That's that's my comfort zone right there. Yeah, and those are the only ones I've done. Then animal stencils. I think I only did one in here. And that was the bunny. Oh no, I did the bunny. And I did the bear. And that's what I did. And then this is another book that I work in every month, just when I don't have too much to do and I want to color. So this is my three color mandalas. They're just little simple ones and the book is Coloring Mandalas for Meditation by Armel Trouillon. He's got a second book out too. So these are just really simple 
mandalas and I am practicing doing three color mandalas with them. So this is uh, Super Tips on, on both of these pages. And that's all I did? I thought I did another one. Oh, that's an old one I did a long, long time ago in paint pens. Okay, so yes, that's all I did. That one doesn't have a blotter page in it. Okay, then this is the Zen Doodle book I'm working on for until it's spring. So we did this one. And I did this one. And that's it. I like the ones that have the dog and the cat together. They're, the, they're, my, they're my favorite ones. Not too crazy about the dog by itself. I'm not a big fan of dogs anyways. And I, kind of, I, I always say it with this book that it kind of bothered me that it's called Playful Pets. There are only dogs and cats in here. So it should be called Playful Dogs and Cats because if it was pets, then there would be goldfish and hamsters and guinea pigs and snakes and rock. People used to have pet rocks. That would be fun. You know, there would be all the pets in it. And that's what I was hoping it would be when I got it. So Now this book, met, the picture in this book magically colored itself because I have no memory of getting out this book and coloring in it. This is a Color Your Hoard, because I, I have not colored any pictures in it, but obviously I have. So they tell me this. I don't know. I honestly can't tell you anything about this, as done with fine liners. I must have done it one night before nothing went through just tiny bit of ghosting I must have been doing it at night and I was so tired that I just blocked it out of my memory but there's absolutely no scribbling on it either so your guess is as good as mine if this book is going to color itself then hey I'll just keep it out and next time I open it up there'll be some more pages it is magical And then my Mystery Colors book. Oh, you know what? I wanted to finish this because there's. A, I should be working on the new volume that's out. Can I do that? Oh. You know what? That just seems like too many pages to be able to finish. Okay, I'm going to keep it out. With... Which one did I say I was going to finish? I said the sunlight one was possible. Oh, Animal Friends. Okay, so I'm going to keep this out with Animal Friends. And hopefully I can get a big chunk done. So um, this month, I did two. So first, see this, this book calls itself Pets. And some of the things that in here are questionable whether they're pets. Not these, though. Okay, so this is obviously a pig, but if you look at his at his tie around his body here, do you see this little part right here where it's red on either side and it's got a flower in the middle? Well, that looked like looks like the Canadian flag right there. So, you know, the red and white. And uh, so I've been calling this my Canadian bacon page. <laughs> Everybody that I tell goes, aww! <laughs> yeah, that's Canadian bacon right there. And here's a dog, which turned out really nicely. So, there we go. Yes, I'm going to keep this one out and kind of get some work done in it because I've got, the, I've got the new volume out and I need to work in it. Okay, I do not, I didn't do anything in here. Why is this here? double check no oh I know I was going I thought I might work in it last night but I didn't have time okay so there we are um 
video is a little bit shorter than it was last month. Last month we were, I did a 45 minute video. This time we're at 40 minutes. So, um, thank you for watching and I hope that uh, you enjoyed your time here. Uh, hopefully you got inspired by some of the things I had to show you. Maybe some of those uh, books you uh, want to pick up. If any of them you want me to do a complete flip through of, just let me know. I am working on on uh, adding flips to all my books, but um, if, though, if any of those don't already have a flip, then they won't be getting one unless I'm asked for it. Because I'm putting new books flips onto, new to me, uh, putting up flips for them. So yeah, if you want if you want a flip of those books, then just let me know and I'll put them on top of my pile. Also, if you ever want to uh, do a color along or a buddy color from any of those books or any book you know that I have, just ask me. And in the meantime, until next time, bye-bye.